Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor, and today we're going to be doing another coaching session for an Alistar. So, thank you very much to NGE Pulse. I greatly appreciate it, and thanks for your patience on this. I know it's uh, been a bit of a delay here since I've been sick uh, earlier this week, so I appreciate that. So, if you're new to the channel, you can always access this Google Doc in the description. You can find timestamps if you want to jump straight to the game start or to the game finish. Um, if you want, I'll have those timestamps for you. And we're going to first off talk about Alistar in the metagame, his position a little bit, recommended runes, items, and then we'll jump right into the game itself. I'll take some physical notes as we watch, offer the commentary, and then at the very end we'll bring it all together to try to give uh, Pulse the best, you know, maybe five to ten tips to help him improve overall. Okay, so let's go ahead and get in here. Um, in general, you want to try to aim for one ward per minute and one control ward per five minutes. That means in a 30-minute game, you want to try to have 30 wards down and you want to aim for six control wards in a 30-minute game. So those are just some very basic numbers, but in general, if you're really far off of those, like if you're only placing like 15 wards in 30 minutes or you find yourself only placing like two control wards in 30 minutes, you need to try to step those up a little bit. Okay. Um, as far as recommended runes, there are quite a few different runes you can go down on Alistar. I think that Aftershock in your lane here because um, you're against a Blitzcrank and a, a Jinx, and we're going to be watching him. He's watching a replay um, on YouTube, and he just does fixed camera on himself. So um, that's that's how we're going to be watching this. But against Alistar, I'd probably go Aftershock, just so you're going to have some more resistances in case he pulls you in. You can just immediately Q if you have to, or you know WQ onto the Jinx. So I think you'll need those resistances in an all-in lane, or if you're against like a Thresh or something like that, Aftershock's good. And then uh, Tier 2 doesn't matter that much. I mean, you can either go um, Demolish or uh, the Tenacity one if you want to. I, I like Font of Life just because it gives more utility to your team. They're going to get a bit more healing in a fight if you do that, which is pretty nice. Conditioning and Second Wind are what you always take here. It just gives you... If you're in a really tough like AP lane, I guess you could take uh, Mirror Shield for the extra AP or the extra MR rather early. The second one you always want to take. It's just a really overpowered rune right now that gives um, about one to two reju beads worth of uh, health in the early games. That's like 300 gold worth of health uh, regen early, which is awesome. So you definitely want that. And then um, you'll want to go over to Inspiration. Always go Magical Footwear no matter what. They're about to change it in patch 8.3 where I think that Magical Footwear is going to be in the same slot as Stopwatch. So you'll want to go Magical Footwear Biscuit if that's the case. And they're going to shave off 50 gold value off of Footwear, but you'll still want to go Footwear. Just too good to pass up. It's nice, guaranteed gold. Right now it's worth about 400 to 450 gold depending on how much you value the move speed. After the change, it'll be worth about 350 to 400. Um, so it'll still be a really good bargain. Stopwatch, um, it's not gonna matter in a week, but you know, pre 8.3 when you can go stopwatch and footwear, you know, you just have to be honest with yourself. How well can you stopwatch? You know, and there's no shame if you can't use it at the right time, if you just forget to use it, or you just find yourself using it and then dying anyway, so you just can't find a good use for it. Just take biscuits. Biscuits are fine. They give you a ton of extra sustain in lane. They're great. So there's no shame in going biscuit there if you can't use stopwatch properly. If you can use it properly, it's really, really powerful. So it can potentially deny a kill to the enemy, which saves your team or denies 450 gold. Um, and then you get the 120 gold for selling it after that. So you can get up to like a 570 gold value. I mean, the best of cases, you deny a kill to the enemy and you get a kill for your team because you bait them into, you know, diving your tower or into chasing you when your enemies are going to back you up or when your allies are going to back you up, rather. So um, Stopwatch has the highest, like, potential ceiling for value um, of the things in the Inspiration Tree, but it also has, like the lowest potential outcome as well where you completely fail your stopwatch use and you just sell it for 120 gold pretty much so then you're giving up really good sustain off of the biscuits in exchange for just 120 gold so it's up to you if you want to run stopwatch or footwear um i think it kind of depends on the matchup too and this one i would like stopwatch a lot because you're against a blitzcrank um but there's no shame in Biscuit. Against something like a Zyra, I'd probably prefer the Biscuit because I really want more sustain in lane. Another option, if you're not going against... Um, if it's not an all-in lane, if it's just kind of a farm-off lane, you could consider going Unsealed Spellbook, which is really nice on Alistar as well. And it's basically the same thing. You'll get the same stuff. You just go Unsealed Spellbook, 
um, either stopwatch or biscuit, magical footwear, the cosmic insight, and then you just go conditioning and second wind. Um, it gives you better potion sustain, so it gives you 20% more potions, gives you, I think, 15 more HP to start with. It's either 15 or 20 more HP to start with. Um, it avoids this fawn of life awkward like tree here, which is not that good if you end up going um, uh, resolve second. And the Unsealed Spellbook gives you more flashes, and Alistar loves flashes. He loves to flash in, queue people, and then knock them back into your team. It's almost a certain kill. So Alistar is very, very good with flashes, and he can also run Teleport um, in the mid-game if you want to teleport to top lane and try to make a play or teleport behind the bot lane. Like, there are a lot of different, like, good teleport plays you could make with Alistar, too. Now, that's a bit more advanced. You have to have really good macro, like, awareness of what you're doing. Um, but even at just, like the most basic level if you take ignite and you get more ignites and more flashes i would argue a lot of the time if you're not in an all-in lane that could potentially be a bigger impact than aftershock because you're going to be tanky enough anyways like aftershock is really just for the early game all ends right once it gets to the mid game once you have your ultimate once you've got your knight's vow on your locket you're already going to be really tanky and so i think that having the ability to initiate more often with your flash is potentially better, but that is a much more advanced build. You will be slightly squishier. You will have to more have more macro knowledge to use those teleports correctly. But that is just something to have on the radar that could be interesting. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, as far as build order goes, builds are very flexible right now uh, as a patch 8.2. So there are a lot of different things you can go. You definitely want to go Targons, and I think that going Righteous Gloria early on, if you're ahead, is really nice. Um, this helps you snowball. Um, gives you tougher engages, gives you some mana. You do need a mana item fairly early, um, or you'll run out of mana after just a couple of combos. So you want to get either go Righteous Glory or um, either Iceborne Gauntlet or Frozen Heart. I mean, I guess you could also go Zeke's. Um, Iceborne Gauntlet is nice if you want to go all in with like Ignites because that slow field is going to allow you to stick to them better. So when you combo them with uh, WQ and then hit them, and put that little slow field on them, then it's going to allow you to stick to them a lot better so that you can get your stun off on your E after you get those five charges. So Iceborne Gauntlet's actually surprisingly pretty good on him. Um, but Righteous Glory achieves the same thing. It slows him down so you can catch up and stun him again with your E, but it allows you to speed up and catch him better as well. And the slow affects multiple people. So either one of those, they're about the same cost if we look them up. Um, I think Righteous Glory is like 50 more gold very common on alistar he has 2650 you get the armor the cdr health regen mana all of these are very good on alistar early on so you do need a mana item so you don't go out of mana other option twenty seven hundred. so iceborne is um 30 more it has 10 percent more cdr which is you know very good. Uh, it has more armor, so it has 35 more armor, but it doesn't have health on it. Uh, it does have more mana, 200 more mana, which could be okay. It does do more damage, so you do 100% extra base damage on hit. Now, you can't spam spells as Alistar. This is just going to be on your engage for a little bit more burst damage. So, unlike some other champions like Tarek, who can constantly proc this, um, you're not going to have as many options to do that. But it does have the area of effect slow, and it does speed you up so that it's really um, a great engage. So if you run up to someone with Righteous, then you don't have to use your WQ sometimes to engage. So you can run up in Q and then W and knock them back into your team. So it's a pretty good option. A lot of Alistars opt for this. Um, if we look at pro builds really quickly, and we'll get into the game here in just a second. I just want to talk about different builds because they are so fluid right now. It's not um, you have to get a certain item every time. I mean, Knight's Vow and Locket are pretty standard most of the time. See, a lot of Alistars are moving towards this um, Unsealed Spellbook build that I talked about. But once again, these are Challenger and pro-level people. There are still a healthy amount that also go for um, Aftershock. So, you know, once again, it's something to think about. It's new, it's trending, but it's a lot harder to pull off at like an optimal level. But it is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. You obviously want to go Mobility Boots as well. 
to go Eye of the Equinox, and then most people are going Righteous Glory, as you can see. In fact, nobody's going Iceborne Gauntlet. Some people are going uh, Glacial Shroud, which I think builds into Glory, right? Yeah. So almost everybody's just going Righteous Glory. I think that Iceborne in the right situation could potentially be good because it has more damage, but overall Righteous Glory um, just has a better like collection of stats. Like You're just getting almost too much mana with this. It's like 500 mana when 300 is probably fine. Um, the extra CDR is very nice, but having armor and health as sort of a mix gives you better protection against spells as well. So, and having that active is very nice uh, in terms of uh, just being able to get in there and engage better. So, you know, most of the time you'll want to go Righteous Glory. Um, but Iceborne is on the table. So I think Targon, Glory, and then either Vow or Locket next. Vow is better single target protection. Uh, gives you better personal tank stats if you're the primary engage. And then um, Locket gives you better team utility. So I think these are kind of the three, or the four items rather that you want and mobility boots. If you get a final item there, um, I mean, you could go like Zeke's Harbinger. Um, most people don't ever get to six items as alley because you want to try to close out games pretty quickly because you're going to get outscaled by the enchanters if you don't so you really need to close you know by 25 30 minutes um so you really shouldn't be getting the six items if you're playing improperly most of the time because you can make so many plays too you can have such a big impact just by roaming around the map um there are some people who get frozen heart kind of last which is pretty good um Especially if they have a lot of auto attackers, like they have a Master Yi, an Aatrox, and a Jinx, like Frozen Heart could be a pretty good option. But yeah, it's mostly, as you can see, just Righteous Glory, lock it, and then if they get another item, then it's Knight's Vow. Um, I like, you can max Q or W. Q gives you better wave clear. Q gives you better AoE knockup in fight. So Q's probably better most of the time to max. W does give you better peel. So if they have better engage and you're constantly on the back foot, um, if you're behind, like, W can be okay to get people off of your AD carry. Uh, but by and large, I think you want the Q. And the big reason is it's your wave clear as well. So in an empty lane, that helps you push into the tower a lot faster so that you can roam around. So that's what I would probably do. Okay, let's go ahead and watch this. Um, so like I said, I can't control the camera work. He has it just on him. And he has the, uh, I think he keeps the tab up most of the time. So we'll watch it. He also has, as you can see, he has a YouTube channel if you want to check him out. I think he might stream as well. NG Pulse. If you want to represent, go look him up on Twitch. Um, go hit him up. Okay, we'll go ahead and watch this. Now, I'm not sure how much he comments on this. You heard his voice say at the beginning. Um, so I haven't watched this all the way through, but... Hopefully that won't be too distracting for you guys if he does talk. I don't think it should be a big deal. Okay, so, and he specifically asked me, if you're wondering, he specifically asked me to start at minute seven because um, he didn't have directed camera on, and so it was just kind of jumping around everywhere for the first few minutes, so he just told me to just go ahead and start at minute seven, and that's fine. So just kind of taking stock of what's going on so far, based on what I can see in the game, it's only uh, zero to one, uh, team comp-wise... Usually I like to start in champ select if people give me YouTube videos or at least talk about sort of when the replay starts, just talk about the compositions and things um, just so we can kind of understand our win conditions and what's going on here. So their main win condition is probably going to be Jinx or Vagar if one of them gets fed. So just keep an eye on that. It looks like Jinx already has a kill. He got Varus once in lane. So she's pretty far ahead. She has a BF sword. So that means it's going to be really hard for you to fight. So unfortunately, you're probably not going to be able to engage and fight that much here. Um, unless you have the jungler to help you. Uh, you guys, Varus can be a win condition, but often in solo queue, he's not that great. People don't position correctly with him, and a lot of people don't itemize correctly either. He has a really bad power spike. Like, if he's trying to get Gensus, which he should, um, the enemy can exploit him big time when he's on that blasting wand. So unless he's snowballsing, it's really far ahead. Um, it can usually be hard for him to keep up. At least kind of at um, lower than diamond. Um, so Shivana is probably going to be your primary person you want to run through. Uh, she is up a lot of CS on Udyr. Uh She hasn't taken Dragon yet. Neither one of them have. So that's something to watch because both of them want to contest Dragon. 
Um, Pulse has total vision on, so I can't, you know, I'm going to kind of have map hacks to see where the jungler is. So that's a little bit unrealistic, but we'll try to work around it. I'll try to talk about if I didn't know where the jungler was, what you should be thinking about and doing to the best of my ability. I'll try to just ignore that. Um, you guys do have teleport advantage. You have one more on Zillion. Zillion, I mean, Zillion is pretty good against Vagar all in, so that's nice. But he's kind of low on damage late game. Garen's kind of low on damage. Your whole team is pretty low on damage, frankly. Um, so you'll probably want to win through, like, maybe split pushing with Shivana, depending on how big Poppy gets. Um, yeah, right now Shivana's top. Okay, we'll go ahead and start it. Right now Shivana's top. Now Blitzcrank has a tier also, so he's not going to do any damage. He also has exhaust. So that tells me that he's going to probably be very passive. For the most part. So if you get pulled, you don't have to be that scared about it. So you can get something more aggressive in that case, like a like a Righteous Glory. You don't have to necessarily itemize into a Knight's Vow really early because he's not going to do as much damage as if he um, you know, was running Electrocute with Ignite and got something like a Sheen to start with. Which I think is probably the best way to build Blitzcrank right now. So he's not going like full out max damage blitz. Now your um your ADC is down about twenty about a third of the CS. You're getting pushed to tower. But there's not a lot you can do here if Shivana's gonna play topside. You just gotta wait. Uh I don't think you've completed your quest yet. Hit this, hit this. Nope. You wanna make sure you use those charges on the big ones if you can. Not a huge deal, but there was a really easy way to pick it off. I know sometimes in lane you're not gonna be able to um you're not going to be able to walk up and get the cannon in a losing lane. Um, but if it's right there at the tower, you know. I mean, it's like 20-something gold, you know. It adds up. Okay, good. Shivana got a kill. Solo in the jungle. So you know that Udyr's not going to be on the map for another, like, 45 seconds probably. But I still wouldn't recommend going aggressive here. I would posture aggressively, though. I'd step up. Because right now, like, just hanging out right here, they're not even scared, you know, that you could do something. And Varus is too scared to go up and last hit. I mean, it's not a big deal, but, okay, that's very good for you. That's kind of bad. But, yeah, you want the Shivana to get fed. I mean, I know this is a losing lane, but I feel like you're still playing too far back. I mean, maybe you don't trust this guy, and that'd probably be fair if he died early. You are behind in levels. I mean, she is pushing. You know, I, she's not trying to zone you, so I guess there's no real, like, emergency to push up. But, yeah, just, like, be around. And the reason is, like, they, they may have seen that. I don't know which elo this is in, but, like, even in under, like, under like platinum and less people are not going to notice um where the jungler is a lot of the times not going to be tracking that so if you stay if you posture aggressively yeah just run out of that run out of that don't fight uh you might yeah you have to ult you have to ult you have to ult that's too late i mean you did get out but you want to ult earlier once they get you to about half health like that you're going to have to ult Okay, that was good. That was great. Nice. Okay, that was a good turnaround. I like that. Y'all need to go get Dragon right now. Dragon, Dragon, Dragon. Shivana is healthy, right? Yeah, two of them are dead. I'd go tell him to get Dragon. Oops, I wanted to ping it to look at the mini-map over there. Yeah, y'all gotta get more than that. Shivana's healthy. I mean, I know you're low, but you might be able to get a plant or something over here. Yeah, Moby's. Okay, this is 8.1, so Sightstone's still in effect. This must have been right before uh, 8.2 drop. Same itemization roughly applies. Your build's just going to be a bit slower. I wouldn't bother with Face of the Mountain on Alistar. Just get Righteous Glory. Um, after you guys got that kill, though... I would at least go take a look at Dragon. Um, 
go up here and just see, like, see if Udyr's there. If he's not there, you know they don't have a bot lane. Um, so you could very easily take that with Shivana because she's really far ahead. You could just bully out this Udyr. I mean, she's she's really far on the items. I mean, she's got her full item. She's about to get her tier 2 boost. He doesn't even have a full item yet. She's up like 30 CS. I don't think she's bought yet, though. But I would at least take a look. Like, if you get a kill on people, you need to go take a look at things. Oh, he did get the dragon. Wait, what? Wait, is that... A no, there's no way that's accurate. That has to be glitched. Okay. I was about to say, I mean, there's absolutely no way there are four dragons already dead in this game at nine minutes. This is not even mathematically possible. Okay, so who got the dragon? Did Udyr get the dragon? Yeah. Okay, so they got the dragon while this was going on. Okay. I just missed that. Sorry. Okay, fair enough. Alright, so we'll speed up here. Okay, so yeah, you want to be looking to roam middle. Now, Vagar's backed. Um, okay, that's good warding, good warding. I like it. Uh, okay, you control warded the try. Look at the items. She's still really far ahead of him. Okay, good. Yeah, you see Blitz top. Good punishment. Tell He needs to ult. No, uh, he had a chance. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Go, 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 go. Okay, good. That was, that was sketchy. I think you could have walked out without flashing, but it was close enough that, you know, I respect the flash. Okay, so that's solid. Was your ult up? Okay, let me see. No, your ult was not up. Okay. If your ult was up, you should definitely should have ulted instead of uh, flash, but your ult was not up, so. Okay, Blitz is top. Yeah, get the tower, get the tower. Go ahead and queue this wave. Help him push with your Q. So I already queued it while y'all are under tower. Go go help him right now and push. Yeah, you have enough mana where I, you can queue the wave. You guys are in like super push mode here. Blitz is still top. You gotta give him maximum punishment for that. Because your top laner is probably gonna start freaking out, like asking, you know, why is this Blitz still here? Now, once again, you need to be queuing this right now. That adds up. It's a lot of damage. If you've been maxing your Q. You have four points in it right now. Like, it'll knock off, like, three quarters of the health. Okay. Um, I think you should have pushed this one more wave, though. I, I would have queued it. So you need to queue the wave a little bit more to help push. And now you probably want to start rotating mid. Yeah, go ahead and finish your uh, ward item. What does that build into? Uh, I don't... Is that a frozen heart? Mm-mm. I, I think you need to go aggressive. Like, you are a little behind in the game, but... I feel like, especially against their team, like, there are several people you can pick off and kill, and I would just want to roam right here. Especially, you just cracked open the first tower. I would, I would go into full-on roam mode. I mean, I would try to get Righteous Glory here. Okay, who's big? Vagar's getting big. Um, that's another thing to watch is Vagar's big. So if you do want to build some defense, it needs to be something with magic resist in it. So, you know, if you want a defensive item right now, I would probably get Locket. Go ahead and ult. Uh, I think you're waiting too long to ult. It did work out there, but you got to remember, like, you're not invulnerable. It's only 50% off, which is a lot, but... If you know you're probably going to have to ult anyways, like if you get hooked and it's going down, just, you know, let them drop you to like maybe 50 or 60% and then go ahead and ult. Like make them commit to the fight. Don't ult instantly, but once they're committed, then just go ahead and ult. Uh, be, you do have Shivana close by. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Whoa. Okay, good. Good. 
Yeah, come over here, run them down. Okay, give up. He flashed, he flashed. Run back. Help help wave clear. You're missing experience and gold right now. No, just go down here. Like you missed that wave of experience. You could have used your three charges. Like, once somebody flashes like that and gets away, just immediately go do something else. Like, just don't even waste any more time at all. So you missed two waves worth of experience. So you could have probably been nine, which means when you back right here, you could have had a sweeper lens, probably. I don't see your experience, but two more waves probably would have put you pretty close, because Varus is uh, level nine. So I suspect you're probably, like, maybe three quarters of the way. But now you're not going to have a sweeper. Okay, so I'm just writing down, use, clear, use Q for wave clear. You got to buy faster in the shop, too. Oh, you're buying, um, is that Zeke's? I guess if you were saving up to get, to complete that item right there, if you have, like, zero gold walking out of the shop and you just needed fro um, glacial whatever, glacial shroud, then I guess that's okay. But you want to, in general, try to back and buy, um, you know, and just be out of the, like, walk out of the fountain within five seconds. Now, keep in mind, if you were waiting until the buzzer there to get that gold, then you could have had that gold if you used those three charges earlier. You would have had, like, 60 more gold if you used those three charges on the wave that you missed. So that means you could have been out of the base, you know, five seconds faster. It's probably not going to make a difference here, but it might. I mean, in the future, it could definitely make a difference, right? Like, if you show up five seconds too late to a fight, I mean, that could determine the entire fight. So every second counts. You know, you don't want to be like, have a lot of anxiety about maximizing every second, but whenever possible, you want to be as efficient as you possibly can be with your time. This league really is a game of seconds. You know, if you're just one second too late to some fights, that's it. Like the fight's over and you lost already. All right, y'all need to back up. You need to back up. They're going to collapse on you. You don't have any wards on those flanks. Speaking of which, you need a ward. It's hard for me to see where you have warded right now because I can see everything. Okay, you have red warded, that warded. Yeah, get this dragon. Ward around, like, so ward, like, where Vagar's coming down, that should be warded. And then around blue buff here should be warded. I'm not sure if you're, like, lagging sometimes or, like, talking to somebody or what. But there's been a couple times you've sort of stood still. Um, you're going to have to give this up because Shivana backed. Make sure that you're pinging the dragon timer ahead of time. Like, one minute ahead of time, you need to ping it. And just tell people, you know, get ready, let's get dragon. Because really, like, you guys have the map pressure right now. You shouldn't be losing dragons when you're up, you know, three towers to one. Yeah, so you should have backed faster so you could go defend mid-tower. I mean, you... Probably wouldn't be able to defend it by yourself, but maybe, you know. Because you're not doing anything bot lane, you know. Okay, you are going Frozen Heart. Okay. Oh, yeah, Zeke's builds out of the um, Aegis. Yeah, I don't really like Frozen Heart here because they only have... I mean, I guess they do have two auto-attackers, really, with Udyr and Jinx. But they're not doing very well, if you see. Like, Jinx is only 1 and 4. Yeah, she will be relevant later, but I don't think that justifies rushing a Frozen Heart. Like, you can pick it up second or third item if she starts doing well. I think the big damage threat here is... Vagar. But I think you can ult and be okay... Just let him die, let him die, let him die, let him die. Just let him die. You're a little a little too late there, but then again, I I'm not I don't think you could do that much. They need to back up. Okay, so you need to you need to figure out something like effective to do here. I would just I would have probably pushed top lane. Because right now what you're doing is you're just falling around plays that you're gonna be too late to. And um Okay, well, I guess that worked out because Shivana's a monster right now. Even though she got kind of a weird itemization build. Okay, so that worked out.
and you did make a nice impact there. But yeah, for the last, you know, minute or so, you just were kind of running around, like, showing up kind of late to the fights, but you did, that did pay off. So, like, your path thing was, you pretty much ran, like, up here, chased this guy getting caught, he got blown up, then you came over here, chased this guy getting caught, he got blown up, and then you started running around this way, chased these guys who got caught, but Siobhan is so strong that she bought enough time for you to get there, so... That's fine. I mean, I don't mind. You know, I was going to say you could, like, push in top. Like, at this point, if you see him get caught middle like that, I would just rotate up to top lane. Especially if you see Poppy over here. I would just rotate up to top lane and just push it in. Just push it in. Maybe auto-attack the tower a couple of times. Put some pressure on that. Force somebody to come up there and deal with you. And then that way they'd have one less person to try to deal with the Shivana down south. And then just run away. All right, so Varus does have his items. He is on he is on a roll. He did snowball past that really awkward blasting one phase of his build. So now he's got the full Gensus, and he's really, really strong once he completes Gensus. Okay, I can't really see what's going on up here, but... Um, I think it's okay to get a good fight if you get one, or to take a fight if you get one. His hook is down. Now your top lane is pushing. Okay. That's rough. Yeah, you got to watch out for that poppy circle. Uh, get Yeah, back up, back up. This is done. Oh. Now y'all need to leave. Hmm. Yeah, I think at the end there, when there was just a couple of you, you probably should have just bailed on him. The, pro the problem with Alistar, like, he has a lot of great things about him, but one thing that he doesn't have is a reverse gear. Like, once he gets in, it's really hard for him to get out without dying. So that was pretty... I don't think your team wants to fight like that, though. Like, you have so little crowd control... I mean, you do have some, but, like, Shivana and Garen don't have any. Like, I feel like splitting is your better bet. Like, having Shivana split side lanes or picking people off with, like, uh, Varus and you hanging out in a bush would probably be a better option. I think just standing there and just A-ramming mid with five people is, they probably are advantage there because of Vagar is just so good at that. He's going to catch somebody with his cage, and he can just zero them out. And you don't have any catch outside of um, really Varus. Like, you can flash Q somebody. But I feel like they just have much more consistent catch than you do on a lower cooldown. So I wouldn't really recommend A-ramming them. I think you're better catching them out. What? Are you going... Abyssal Mask? Yeah, I really would not recommend Abyssal Mask on Alistar. I mean, it does increase Shivana's damage a little bit. A lot of her damage is magic. It does increase, like, Zillion's damage. But, like, unless you've got a... A Rise or a Cassiopeia for some reason who didn't build that item. Maybe they went Rod. And they're, like, 6-0 and or something. Like, I, I really wouldn't get Abyssal Mask. And at that point, they already have enough damage. They're not going to need more. I just, you know, when I'm thinking Alistar, like, I'm thinking you pick Alistar for roaming, flanking, and engaging. Like, that's his big thing. And so I would want items most of the time that help with that. So that means Righteous Glory. And then just, like, Knight's Vow and Locket, just because those are the two most, like, overpowered, cost-efficient um, tank items. You gotta think, too, like, those items, like, 
Lockett and Knight's Vow. I think Knight's Vow is 2200 and I think Lockett is also. One of them might be 2300 But they're both, like, so cheap compared to, you know, Frozen Hearts, 2700 Or Abyssal Mask, I think, is 2900 So you want to get those cheap, really efficient tank items. They offer. They also offer like better protection for your team, you know. And right now, you need to be protecting Shivana. Like you need a Knight's Vow on that Shivana, and a. Uh, you guys need to stop. You lost the fight. Just back up. It's fine. You lost. Just live to fight another day. Just reset. Okay. Well, they're gonna know Garen doesn't have TP now, so y'all need to back up. Like they're immediately gonna try to run for you, probably. Because they know that Garen's not going to be there. And they know he doesn't have TP anymore. Now their Jinx just randomly backed too, so. So I'm just saying you need to buy those cheap standard support items with the exception of righteous glory because that's just so good with alistar's kit that you can afford to go for that one but it's worth the extra cost but in general like most tanks you want knight's vow and locket because those are your two best cost efficient tank items that also offer a lot of protection to your allies that's the big kicker so like frozen protection or frozen heart offers you some good protection and it does lower the attack speed and abyssal mask which i assume is probably what you're working towards does um, offer you protection, gives your allies a little bit more offense, but, um, you know, it doesn't provide as much defense. I mean, I understand maybe you're doing this because, you know, you're just worried, like, you feel like your team just needs more damage, which is legit, but I, I feel like if that's what you really think, that your team needs more damage, then you should just go for Zeke's Convergence, and I think that would even be better than Abyssal Mask here, because that's at least going to give Varus a lot more on-hit damage. And that's going to work really well with his Hurricane. So if you want a better like offensive item, I would just go Zeke's. It's also cheaper. And it's going to give more damage than Abyssal Mask will. No, you can't, you can't take him. Yeah, you just got to let that go. Hmm. Old hitting got CC'd. See, a lot of it, you know, a lot of your, uh, your big win condition is Shivana, and she just doesn't have any defensive items. She should be building all defense. Like, she should have... You know, um, the attack speed item, jungle item, and then she should go something like um, Frozen Mallet into, uh, like, Randuin's. Or something like that. Like, she should have a lot more defense. But she doesn't. So, you know, having, like, a nice power locket would help out a lot there. Hmm. Uh, I would get control wards instead of um, cloth armor there. I think you're just not warding enough on the map right now. Like, there are no blue wards. And I understand that you just died, so it's hard to get down wards, but... No, 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 do not show down here. Do not show. Baron is up. You have no wards on Baron. They just they see three people bottom right now. They just saw all three of you bottom, so they could have rushed Baron right there. Unfortunately, Poppy's just like AFK in the fountain or something, and Udyr's just like doing his golems. Like, if they were paying attention, they saw three people bottom like that, it's just like instant barren. And you never know. Because there's no wards. Like, you need to get wards around barren right now, and you need to be on that side of the map. Like, there's just no reason to be bottom. Like, pretty much, if barren's available, um, you know, past... Even at 20 minutes against some team comps, you just you never want to show bottom as a support unless you're playing like an unsealed spell book and you've got teleport. Like really any role, you don't want to be bottom if you don't have teleport. Unless you have like significant map pressure and really good vision and you know they're not going to be on Baron. 
but yeah, as of right now, you have no back pressure and you had no vision. Now they're gonna get dragon because of it, but it's better than Baron. But you need control wards also. Like having three control wards right there instead of that cloth armor would be huge. Y'all need to be killing that Vagar. Jinx doesn't matter right now. That Vagar is a big ticket. Jinx isn't going to kill you. Vagar will. Okay, good. Um, push middle, push middle. Push middle. Ping it, ping it. No, 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 no. Do not, Baron. Don't Baron with your deer alive. Just get middle. And don't risk it. Just don't ever risk the enemy jungler flashing over the wall and stealing Baron. And especially y'all are so low. Hmm. I can't see the... Okay. I'm saying. Yeah, don't... Just take the tower. Go ward it. You need to back up because they're going to try to rush it, potentially. After you back. Yeah, y'all have pressure top, but... Mm, Javon is about to get caught. Yeah, having three more control wards there would be um, would be a lot better than a cloth armor because then you could shut out vision from the enemy around Baron. Because that's like a really good way to close this game out right now is just shut out vision around Baron. They will come face check it and then just kill him. Like you can wait in this bush, you can wait in this bush, this bush, just anywhere around there. Just shut him out. They're probably gonna get it. Because y'all didn't back fast enough. Okay, good. Y'all got there just, just in time. Hmm, I don't know about that. Alright, um, go, go peel the Varus. Yeah, you're kind of in here disrupting these things, but like, in this kind of fight, let me pull this up. Like, look at the Varus. Varus is really big right now, if you look at his, um, I mean, I know Shivana is like the number one person, but she doesn't need peel as much as Varus. Like, she can just melee people. So engaging with Shivana is good, but like, you don't need to be there to peel for her as much. Varus, however, does need your help. So like, look at Varus. All right, Jinx is dead, so you don't have to worry about getting on Jinx. So right now, your main goal should be Peel Varus. Okay, so reset. Once you get stunned there, reset. And just look and see. Okay, Varus is over here alone, so you need to be walking back over there. Like, you're just kind of over here, just, like, locking up the Blitzcrank. But if you just, like, stay on the Varus and just peel him, that could have been a big deal. I mean, if Varus is alive right here, you guys could Baron. But because Varus died, you probably can't Baron. But, like, you could have tanked it and then Shiv and Varus could have taken Baron. So that's a big deal because you're, you know, kind of in the middle. Like, yeah, you're sort of locking up Poppy and um, Blitzcrank, but at the same time... Your Varus is just getting melted and can't really do a lot. Now, he died with Flash, and he probably didn't use his Mercurial. But, like, that's a much better way. After you engage like that, just go ahead and hold on to your W and your Q to peel off, you know, a major DPS that you have, like Varus. Okay, so...
All right, so I'm just writing down more vision, more control wards. Um, just type in Peel Varus after they engage a little bit more. Okay. All right, they just lost their mind. Bliss is just running in 1v5 when Jinx is in the base. Okay, I think now you're getting Knight's Vow, which is good. Um, You don't have a control word here, and they have it warded, yeah. You should really never try to do this Baron without control words. Now, okay, they're just all chasing Garen. <laughs> all right. So they all just decided to chase Garen. Like, they have wards. They know you're doing Baron. Just stall. Zillion's pushing top. Yeah, just push middle. Just push the side lanes. Don't worry about the dragon. I mean, don't give it to them. But, like, put enough pressure in the side lanes where they don't want to fight you. Like, no, you don't want to sit around and wait, I don't think, here. First of all, y'all don't have any, like, sweepers or control wards. They've got it warded. I mean, they know you're not doing it because you don't have any wards on anything. So they just sit back and watch you just waste your Baron timer. They know exactly where you are. They see you right here. Alright. Oh, she got blown up. I mean, so they have too much intel on you. They know exactly what you're doing. They're just not responding appropriately. But this is, like, really, really important that you shut off their intel. You can kind of see where it is now, right? Like, you see exactly what they can see. So they have really good intel. They're just making bad decisions. But there will be teams that you face that will make better decisions. Like, you'll be waiting in that bush, waiting on them. I guess to say waiting twice there. And they'll just, like, sneak up and just, like, you know, get you with some crafty maneuver because they know exactly what you're trying to do and where you are. Or they just sit there and wait and just let you waste Baron. And just wait until you start dragging and then they go mess with your dragon. There you go, yeah, peel that bears. No, get up there, get up there. You're too far out of the play. Alright, get this. Um, I'll say rotate bottom, rotate bottom. Yeah, go clear top. Have Zillion clear top. Tell Zillion, like, ping Zillion teleport. Tell him to clear top. Like, he should use his teleport right now. It's too late. Now he's gonna die. Just, yeah, good. <laughs> 
So Zillion should have teleported top, everyone else should have backed and then pushed bottom. Yeah, so Zillion's trolling around and he missed like 300 gold bot lane, probably even more. It's a massive amount of gold on those minions. What's... Yeah, I don't know who's pinging if that's you, but yeah, someone should be telling them to back up. Y'all, no, keep pushing. Keep pushing. Don't go over there. Well, it's not really safe for you to push up much further, but drop vision. Like, drop vision around blue buff, because someone's going to rotate up there to try to pressure that, probably. Yeah, you need to be dropping a lot more vision, like, as you're going. So, right here in this map position... You should probably drop vision. Like, you should have at least dropped one ward on blue. And potentially, like, another ward over here. So you guys need to rotate over to top lane at this point. Because Blitz pushed back in bot lane. So, I would go get that top lane tower. This is not accomplishing anything. Like, you don't just want to stand here middle. There's already supers piling in. I mean, I guess, like, if you want to push them back. Like, push up middle one more wave. And then go to top lane, but I still think it's a waste. Okay, now y'all need to chill and wait. Garen doesn't have his teleport up, so y'all need to back up. Because they see him bottom, and they're going to try to engage on you. So yeah, just chill and wait. Wait on Garen to get pressure. Top lane's pushing also, just wait. Garen backed. Alright. I mean, this is basically a case of, like, no one's focusing that Shivana. And they just can't deal with her. She does too much damage. She finally got a couple of defensive items. I mean, it's just a case of just outscaling, you know. As I said early on, if you guys win, it's probably going to be through Shivana. They just don't have anyone that can duel her later. Who wait? You don't have Knight's Vow on anybody, I don't think. No. You need to like you need to act don't forget to activate your Knight's Vow. Like it needs to be on Shivana, but I don't see any arrows, so I assume you didn't activate it. Okay, let's see. All right, let's go ahead and get in here. Okay, good. Overall, pretty good. I thought you had some good engages. Uh, it was pretty solid fights. So these were some of the things that I saw. Um, once again, we didn't see the very early levels. Uh, it looks like Varus died. So I assume he probably got hooked by Blitz or something at some point. Um, so just make sure that you're doing your best to peel. Like if... If Blitz hooks him, you need to headbutt back the uh, the enemy AD carry, not the Blitzcrank. So go after, like, the Jinx. Right, you headbutt back the Jinx, and then you walk back and you cue the Blitzcrank to knock him up. And if you have your E available, then you use your E to stun him. So number one order of business is get Jinx back, or whichever AD carry it is. If it's a Blitzcrank plus, you know, some other AD carry in your Alistar. Knock back the AD carry, and then as you're running back, then you cue the Blitzcrank and try to put more damage on him with your E. Okay, so I don't know like how that went down. I didn't see it because we started at seven minutes. Um, but uh, that's something to, to keep in mind. Okay. Um, okay, so use your Q for wave clear and empty lanes. I saw you too often, like when you guys were pressuring that tower, when the next wave comes up... Um, Especially when you know the Blitzcrank's top and you're not going to 
be pressured that much bottom, just go ahead and cue the wave. Um, that's going to let your AD carry um, wave cleared a lot faster. So cue the wave in an empty lane. Like if they just backed and you're trying to push the tower, or if you're trying to get damage on the tower like you were, and you know they're not going to be there for a little bit, then you could go ahead and cue the wave as well. So you should be maxing Q and go ahead and use that for wave clear. If you have enough mana and if there's, if you are pretty confident there's not going to be any threat, you know, over the next 12 seconds or so while that Q's on cooldown. Um, so ping allies early and prepare for objectives. So... You know, they they really should not be getting dragons against you when you're up three towers to one. You know, and they shouldn't get a free mid-tower um, while everybody's just running around doing random things. Like, ping it. Like, say, like, ping the dragon three times at one minute and say, hey, dragon, dragon, dragon. Say, help me ward this. Go set it up. Say, let's go get this. Push the lane up. Let's go get this. So just give them some directions, you know. And it doesn't take much. You don't have to type a novel. Just ping dragon a few times, then say, um... Help me get it, or something like that, you know? So that'll tell everybody, ideally, if they're paying attention, okay, I need to go get my item right now, or I need to go, um, you know, push this lane, or I at least need to start walking over there. And for you, you know, at one minute, it takes about 30 seconds to walk from the base to the dragon or to the middle of the field. So you need to back, refresh your wards, buy some control wards, you know, one or two control wards, get the best items you can get, and then get back there, like when one minute pops. Make sure you're healthy, and then set up vision. So around Dragon, you want to try to, if you're on blue side, you want to try to get vision right here, right here, and then put a control ward in here, and then usually like one extra ward, probably in this brush. <clears throat> and then you know. And then you can wait, like right here, because you're going to have it all set up, all swept and good to go. Um, and use your sweeper out here. So you sweep here, control ward this pit, uh, ward, ward, ward. If you don't have a control, or if you don't have um, your sweeper up, use your control ward on the outside to deny the vision here. So it's less likely on red side that they're going to ward deep into this pit. Like, they might ward the back of the pit. Very unlikely, though. Most people on red side, if they're warding, they'll just ward right here, like maybe here, like in the corner or something. But um, sometimes if they're scared, they'll ward over these walls. Like, right here is a very common spot, like just warding over this wall. So having a control ward here shuts out all that vision. But yeah, and then if they try to come contest dragon, you're already ready, you're Alistar, you just engage on the Udyr, free kill, free dragon, boom. It's easy. So just make sure you're setting up early. Because a lot of teams will get there, you know, they'll try to go get Baron and set up like, you know, maybe 10 or 15 seconds early when it's yellow. But not enough teams go back, get powerful, get their items, ward, and prepare, you know, starting one minute in advance. And then also make sure the waves are up if you can. So when you're preparing for Dragon, for example, you just go back, buy around one minute, refresh your wards, start running up here. You'll get here with like 30 seconds left. Tell your team, push wave. So push this up or push this up wherever you can. Just push it up. Get over here. Get that ward. Get that vision. And so ideally they have one or two of these lanes pushing to their tier one or further. Um... They don't have any vision, and they'll have to go face check. And if they decide to fight you, then they're going to lose experience at towers. Or, let's say that you push this up, it starts... So you have like a wave and a half stacked up against their one wave right here, so it's slightly pushing. They decide to come down here and fight you for dragon instead. They have no vision. You engage, kill the Udyr, maybe kill one other person right here. Everyone else runs. You already have a wave that's just about to push into there. Now... Either you can just go over here and take this tier 2 and just forget Dragon and then go get it after you get the tier 2. Or you can get Dragon and then go for the tier 2. I think if you kill two people, like in that scenario I was talking about, you would just forget the Dragon. Go get the tier 2 and then on your way back, then you go get it. But yeah, that's why you always want waves up. Is because if you win a fight, then you're actually going to be able to go get towers. Okay, if you don't have waves up, so like if the wave's like right here... <clears throat> and you didn't push it, and you kill a couple of people, you're not going to have time to push this up, get this tower, and get the dragon. So that's why you always want to have your waves up before you're about to contest an objective. Um, uh, 
So you need to get the cheaper support items. They're just a lot more bang for your buck, and they help protect your allies a lot more. Frozen Heart is okay, but they didn't have that many auto attackers. Like, all they had was Udir and Jinx, and they weren't really that fed. They were pretty behind all game. Now, if the enemy team, like I said, has something like a, um, you know, a Jinx plus a uh, Master Yi plus an Aatrox or, you know, just like a ton of auto attacking champions and they're all fed, then yeah, maybe that's a good option. But you're just paying a lot of gold for flat mana, which you don't need as much on Alistar. You do need some mana, but you don't need that much. Um, and you're not giving any extra tankiness or survivability to your team. Whereas if you have Knight's Vow, you are helping your team out. If you have Locket, you are helping your team out. Um, so it's just too many personal tank stats, I think. If you want to get a slightly more expensive item, then I would recommend um, Righteous Glory. And the reason is, it just fits Alistar's kit so well, and it helps you engage a lot better. So I think Righteous Glory would have been great here, but if you want to go for more tank items, then I would go for Vow and Locket for sure. And that's pretty much on every tank support you're going to get Vow and Locket. Um, it was difficult to see in that game because we had vision of everything, but, you know, I highly suspect that on your side of the map, from your perspective, that was a very dark game. There were not a lot of wards going on out there, not a lot of control wards. I think you maybe had, like, three control wards all game. Um... You want to make sure that you're constantly replacing control wards because it not only gives you vision, it denies the enemy vision. So you want to lock them out of vision so that they can't make good decisions. As you saw at the end, like they bungled it, they got caught anyways, but they had perfect vision of where you are and what you were doing around Elder. So they could have just waited and just let you run out of Baron and just push the lanes up instead of contesting because they knew you weren't doing Baron. They could have just pushed the lanes... And then not only would you have wasted your time waiting, but now you have to go deal with the lanes before you can go like waste time again at Elder. So they could have managed that with their vision and made it a lot more difficult for you. Whereas if you sweep it out, they have to go face check, and that's when you can wait and kill them. But there's really no point in sitting around trying to wait if you don't have secure vision of the area. right? Because not only could it be a waste of time, but it could actively be bad if they form like... A surprise attack on you, right? If the game's a little bit closer, um, they could actually sneak up on you if they have vision. So you want to make sure you have good vision and good control ward denial of enemy vision. So it's not enough just to get vision with the control ward. You constantly want to replace them to deny the enemy vision. Okay. Um, So you want to peel Varus after an engage. So it is good to go in there and engage because you are Alistar. You do have really good engage. Your team just didn't have really good engage otherwise other than like a Varus ult. So that is good. Go in there, try to blow up the Jinx or the Vagar. That's great. But then after that, your next set of cooldowns, you should be walking back towards your AD carry and trying to keep the enemy off of your AD carry. So you should be trying to peel the Poppy and the Udyr off of your AD carry after you've already engaged. So, you know, sitting there and just, like, trading auto attacks with Blitz or, like, you know, queuing the Blitz or, like, you know, d using W to knock Udyr back into the Baron Pit. Um, I mean, these things are okay, but I feel like sticking on the Varus, once he gets that powerful, once he's got, like, nine kills and a couple of items, then it's worth sticking on him. You know, if he was, like, 0-6 or something and really far behind, sure, just let him die and just stay on other people, but since he was doing pretty well, I feel like you should have probably stayed on the Varus. You did in some fights. You did a great job in some fights, but there were a couple um, where I think paying attention to that a bit more is good. And so when you're playing an engaged champion like Alistar, I know it can be difficult to decide, like, you know, how how many of your cooldowns do you use on the engage, and how many do you hold back for um, peeling for your AD carry. So it's tough to tell, but you know, definitely after the first round of cooldowns, you need to be thinking, okay, I need to go back and, like, peel off the AD carry. Um, so you need to be using... Shivana was your big carry that game, though, so you need to be using all of your resources on Shivana. So you should have had Knight's Vow on her. You should lock it, like, at the start of the fight to give her a little bit more effective health. You should use Exhaust 
to try to um, stop people who could potentially kill her. So exhaust the Jinx, exhaust the Vagar. Just do everything you can to keep that Shawana alive. I'm pretty sure you didn't use exhaust or um, Knight's Vow that game. I think you forgot to click on it. So just make sure that you're putting that on somebody. I think Shiv's probably the best one, but Varus would be a decent option as well. Um, so the final thing I wanted to mention is I just want you to retreat a little bit sooner after the play ends. So, you know, once somebody flashes over the wall, just go back about your business. Or, like, once you get that inhibitor, just get back. Like, immediately, just go out of sight, maybe drop a ward in the middle of the lane, back up. You know, because I feel like you got kind of caught a lot of times sort of in this in-between where you're kind of walking back and forth and you weren't really sure. And your allies are just kind of walking back and forth, like maybe wanting to fight, maybe not. And it was just a lot of really inefficient use of time. And so just be really crisp with your decision making. Just say, okay, play's done. We got the inhibitor. Great. Back up. And just as you're backing up, just start thinking, okay, where's the next play? What are we doing next? And then just say, okay, looks like bot lane is pushed up. Let's go bot lane. So after you get that first inhibitor, you should just look at the map and say, okay, what's the next lane that's pushed up the most? And I think it was bot lane at the time. So you guys should have backed and then just immediately bought some stuff and went to bot lane. And then everybody was kind of A-ramming middle for a while. Like the inhibitor's already down there and they're delighted to waste your time. You know, a red side just wants to hold you to just kind of in this A-ram standoff middle lane. So, you know, just if you want to, you can push up middle a little bit more, but then you need to rotate to a side lane. At that point, I probably would have gone top because Blitzcrank uh, cleared out the bottom. And top's just closer. So I probably would have gone um, over to the top lane. So you could push up here, and then as you're rotating the top, drop some wards in here. Uh, that late in the game, I'd probably drop a ward here and like here. They're almost always going to have this swept and pinked, but like right here and here, you might be able to get away with some vision. And like over this wall. Yeah, I would have pushed up maybe to here, and then rotate over to the top and pressure that tier 2. So just find something productive to do with your time. Don't get caught in this sort of like back and forth, you know, just trying to chase around and figure out what your allies are doing. Like be proactive, ping them, tell them like, hey, everybody go top, back and top, back and top. So just let them know in a polite way what they should be doing. Okay, that's going to be it. Hope this helps. Uh, good game overall. I think you're definitely playing well. Uh, hopefully these pointers will help you out. Anyone out there watching, if you'd like a coaching session, um, just email me at the strategy professor at gmail.com. Usually I can get to them within a few days. You know, if I get sick or if there's something going on with the family, you know, it might take a couple more days, but in general, uh, I'm trying to get to them as fast as I can. Um, so just email me, set that up and I'll make a video just like this for you. If you want to watch more coaching sessions, you can click on the playlist here. And if you want to watch individual champion guides, um, I don't have an Alistar one, unfortunately, yet. But I do have a bunch of other champions, over a dozen. So go ahead and check that out if you want um, some in-depth guides on how to play some of your favorite champions. But that's going to be it. Thank you very much. Have a good day. And I'll see you next time.